Hey there, good people, and welcome to another episode of The Finnovators. Stuart Bell here, and in today's episode, I want to uh, share with you again uh, some training modules that are taken directly from the coaching program I run. Uh, and this one's in particular is quite timely. Before that, I wanted to just do a couple of shout outs. Firstly, to Martin Morris. Uh, Martin is someone I've had the opportunity to work with as a client. Uh, he's also uh, a bit, bit of a tech entrepreneur on the side and he's created his own platform called Absolute Engagement, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to hear big things about, uh, in the coming years because he's really nailed it. I also want to say a big shout out to Emily Jenkins and Clayton Daniel of Ensemble um, for inviting me to come along and see the production quality at their uh, all licensee PD day. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Ensemble, which I, I doubt many of you are, do go and check out their, their site at Ensemble.com. That's with no E on the end. So let me tell you about today's module or episode, I should say, called End of Year Engagement. And this is something which is uh, very topical and very close to mind because um, I started doing... Uh, uh, this piece of work um, about six years ago. And actually, if you went along to our, our, our practice uh, management portal, success.aldera.com.au, and you logged in there, you would notice that I've been running uh, a three-part free training series to end the year. And this is kind of the first one because right here and now for me, uh, I often explain it as, as, as this time of year for financial advisors and marketing and lead generation is a bit like florists on Valentine's Day. There's a whole bunch of things that are going on right now that make... Um, Prospects and, and very amenable, uh, to booking in an appointment in the new year. It's also a great time to be talking to your advocates and priming them during social season and a fantastic time to be reaching out to strategic partners, either your current ones or ones you want to have a engagement with and really setting the tone for a restart, which is what all of this is about. Uh, in my experience, just like, you know, if you're doing a marathon, it's not what you do on the day that counts. It's often what you do in the days preceding the marathon, which will dictate how you, how well you do. Right here and now, it's what you do to end the year, how you end the year often dictates how well you get started and whether or not you get uh, a really good start and really good kickstart to the year or alternatively, you come to March and you're still trying to get the uh, the engine started. So that's it from me. That's the preamble. So jump in. I hope you enjoy uh, end of year engagement. As always, if you really like it, please do leave a review uh, and yeah, I'll hand over to end of year engagement. Right here and now. There's something special about the way people are thinking. There's an end of year mindset and it goes a bit like this. <sighs> what a year, man. That hit, you know, particularly right now. That was that. Wow. Jeez, I wouldn't see that coming. Gee, man. If I look back, helicopter view, there's a bunch of stuff that, you know, I wasn't expecting. There's a bunch of stuff which got done, but there's a bunch of stuff I, I didn't get done. I'm going to take some time over Christmas. I'm going to come back. I'm, I'm going to make sure next year is a really good one. It's weird, but right here and now, uh, most people, in whether it's actively or, or uh, not so actively, we tend to just naturally uh, gravitate towards this helicopter view on looking back on things from instead of deep within the belly of the beast, we tend to look higher. And as a result, particularly with prospects and, and with clients and, and anybody, to be honest, who, who is looking forward to the future, hooking into a certain conversation that might be going on in my head about the year that was, the things that didn't get done, the things that it intended to get done, and kind of setting it up for the opportunity to uh, get it done in 2022. This is powerful stuff. One of them, I, I think um, I think it might have been uh, Jay Abraham said, the easiest way to do marketing is to buy into the conversation that somebody's already having in their head. What do they already feel they need? What do they recognize as a problem? And right here and now, this is the conversation. And this is why I think doing this marketing piece right now can have more ROI per, per effort than, than most other marketing pieces throughout the year. So my goal for you as part of this is to seize the Christmas spirit, to, to hook into a bit of that goodwill, a bit of that <sighs> taking some time off, disconnecting that we all have. I want you to trigger some recency as well. Um, if you know about recency, it, it's really relevant if you're hiring. Uh, it's really relevant on a number of different things. But generally, most people remember the first thing that happened and the last thing that happened, which is why client experience, the first 90 days, how you approach your first uh, initial appointment are really key. But I think what you do, um, Daryl, we were talking about this when you had that um, conversation with a client who uh, made a decision that they wanted to go elsewhere. And we said, I think you, you said, it's just about the same time I did, which is we're going to roll out the red cap, carpet. We're going to make the exit as almost as good as the entry. And sure enough, what they what that client will remember is when they started and when they left. So we're going to trigger recency by making sure that the contact we have with clients or prospects or partners is the last thing that they remember from the year that came before. 
I've already spoken about the barbecue on conversation. There is a lot of socializing going on right now. And I want you to be able to be top of mind, have those neurons fired. So when the conversation comes up, you, because of the recent conversation of things that remember, most of all, I want us all to have a really happy Christmas. So three audiences this is designed to focus on. The first one is clients who are advocates of you. So if you, by the way, if you don't already have an advocate list, I think most of you would, if you don't, basically just sit down and make a list of every single client over the last two years who's referred somebody through. You can do it with your friends as well. Uh, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell who talked about this in his book. Um, uh, it was a tipping point. He said, often social groups are connected by what we call super connectors. I imagine I, there's a few people here who are social connectors. Sam uh, Carroll is a social connector. Daryl is a, social, a super connector rather. Um, Martin, I have a funny feeling you might be a super connector as well, but they're people who tend to know a lot of people. And as a result, they're more likely to speak to different people about things uh, and they're more likely to refer. So we're going to target those. Uh, I don't know how many lapsed prospects you have over the last two years. People who came to meet with you or had a conversation for whatever reason it didn't progress. Now I'm going to give you some conversation or some wording that you can go back and sort of, again, taking advantage of what's going on right now. Encourage, ask them whether or not they got done with the thing that they meant to get done. And if not, suggest that they, they, they lock in for uh, a meeting with you in 2022, assuming that you want to do that. And the third part is as centers of influence and partners. Bottom line to this, I reckon we can talk about our industry, but there's also been a massive change in uh, the broking industry. Accountants have pretty much done the work of Centrelink for the last two years. Uh, the risk industry, massive changes there. So a lot of industries have been through a lot of turmoil. And as a result, reaching out now and sort of saying, well, you know, I know we meant to do some work or, you know, uh, maybe you're thinking about working with some businesses. Now is the time to lock that stuff in. So you're ready for the three campaigns. The first is, and you can choose to do one, you can choose to do three. The first is an outreach campaign. I kept this one really simple. It's a campaign to go out by email, SMS, or you can even, do you know what? You can even do video on this one if you really want to. Uh, this works just as well. Josh, I know you're big on video. This works just as well, grabbing a camera and doing almost the same script, but do it to video. In fact, I'd, I'd argue it probably works better. And then do it with your loom, drop your loom into an email and away you go. So we're going to send it out to those advocate clients, lapsed prospects, or actual or potential uh, referral partners. The second one is an inbound campaign using a lead magnet. Um, I'm going to share with you and a landing page which is specifically designed that can go out to your uh, the clients of your partners or potentially have just been, can just be going out to your client base. Or if you really want to go down that route, there's nothing to stop you rebranding this and using this as a, a marketing campaign thing and, and driving it, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whatever your thing is. And then finally, I'm going to go through this one. Uh, I'm going to go through this one quickly because there's a few of you, Martin, uh, who really, really wanted to know a bit more about this, but I'm happy to go into more detail and record a bit more video around it. So outreach, inbound, and testimonials. Let's jump into the first one. The outreach, there's a few options here. Uh, the workbook has all of the email templates. You have to take them, modify them, send out two today, two tomorrow, two next week, whatever it might be. First one is kind of a primer. And the goal here is to just send it out to some of those clients who do refer and reinforce, show some appreciation, reinforce the fact that, you know, they did appreciate a uh, refer before and then prime a client to do it again. And it's just an email. Thank you. Hey, Daryl, I just want to say firstly, a big thank you. I really appreciate your support and love working with these last 12 months. And we wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you before the Christmas break. I just want to say for in, thanks for introducing me to Josh. It means a lot that you would endorse us. That's the, that's the reinforcement piece. It's often these instructions that mean the most to us. So I want to say thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to help those you feel would benefit from working. And if uh, working, if you feel as someone who would like us to help work us to achieve, uh, work with us to achieve a certain outcome, need, or service, usually, by the way, that will be something that is relevant to them because people tend to know people just like them. Uh, let us know, and we're looking forward to working with you. Our offer closes on this date. We're back on that date. If you need anything, just let us know. And make it a great Christmas. Super simple. These aren't, these aren't designed to be difficult. They just, just get them out there. Um, this is one that you might want to put out. If you've got certain clients, for example, who uh, you want to improve engagement or you want to sort of make sure uh, you want to just do a quick touch point. Uh, and it's less about primary for referral. So it's often it can be better for clients who don't naturally refer. But it's just I want to drop a quick line. It's been a big year for us. Maybe some personal comments in there. Uh, two things I want to ask you before we break. What's one thing you'd like to do or achieve over the break? 
How about in 2022? Is there anything specific in terms of goals? And if they come back and indicate there is, again, this is the opportunity for you to turn around and say, well, do you want to have a bit of a chat about now in January? And potentially fill up some of the opportunity pipeline as well as the engagement and preempt it. Does that make sense so far? You with me? Cool. Client gifts. Look, I'll talk a bit about what you can put out there, but if you've got high value clients or people that you've really appreciated, then just uh, you know, just popping out a little email to say, really appreciate the support. I want to shoot through a little something from myself and the team. Sometimes I ask for, I like to ask for a, 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 an address, firstly because it sort of preempts that it's coming, so they they keep an eye out for it. But secondly, say if you're sending it to the wrong place and doesn't have the impact, you can talk a bit about the gift, and then just again let them know what the date. Just a quick question. I'd love to sort of do a bit of brains trust. What, in your opinion, makes a really good client gift? Who's got some good ideas? What makes a good client gift? Feel free to, if you want to do it verbally, but I'd love to get it in the chat box, actually, so we've got a bit of a, uh, a list. Like, what, what for you makes a really good client gift this time of year or just in generally? What are some ideas you got? Books, Martin, books are awesome. Uh, personalized to show you. Listen, great. Yep. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I think you guys know me. I, I hate the corporate gift thing because a <laughs> the things people very rarely use and b they've got your logo on it which is kind of the piece of the point unique but inoffensive fair enough making sure i ask me <laughs> yeah you know what i think i think books are good uh uh was it gold class tickets are good i think christmas decorations are a good one um most uh shopping centers this time of year you can go in and they'll sell these beautiful sort of um i guess you know they're kind of unique well, it's a handmade, but we know they're not. They're always good. Something that's low-key and relevant. We've sent hampers in the past. Hampers are good, actually. Hampers are not bad. The, the only thing with hampers is they can, like, they can get quite expensive if you're buying a lot of them. Books of books. Books is a really good one. Uh, I really like sending journals. Uh, I personally love journals. Uh, I love the feel of them. I love the look of them. I love the, all the rest of them. So, I mean, that's another one. But, yeah, there's, I think you can't go wrong with books, Christmas decorations. Uh, what's the other one we got in there? Hampers are good if you've got clients or if there's something specific. Um, gold class movie tickets are great because I, they have a kind of a double whammy. You know, you get them and then you go and see the movie and you have a double. Uh, good question, Josh. Would I say the book should be financially related? I wouldn't. No. I think um, I my general rule of thumb on gifts is if it's not something that I would want to buy, I won't go near it, uh, which is why I don't give sort of um, – uh, sort of branded merchandise or anything like that. I, I think just choose a book which you think is a great read. I, I, I wouldn't go near. I wouldn't go near a fiction book. I think it should be nonfiction. But you know, things like the One Thing by Gary Keller is a good one. Atomic Habits is a great book. Um, yeah, those, those kind of things which are generally quite easy to read, uh, but you know, a good reads are pretty good as well. Does that help? Cool. Um, this is one. Magazine subscriptions are good. That's a, that's not a bad one, yeah, because they get it get it every month. That's that's not a bad one too. Um, I mean, there's some interesting books. There's interesting ones out there. There's one called The Mysterious Box Company. Again, the problem with these things is they can add up really quickly. It's amazing. Actually, do you know what? It's amazing. There are some beautiful pens you can buy out there. The whole, I think everyone's heard that story about you know signing their contracts and that's a nice pen. Sure, you can have it. And this guy who's signing the contract has bought thousands of them. But uh, what type of subscription? Oh man. Wired magazine, you could put depends on the person, really. I'd imagine depends on whether they what, what they like in particular. Let's talk about um, uh, this is one for lapsed prospects, and this is probably the, the key one. I think if you've got a list of five or ten lapsed prospects, and what I mean by that, people you've met with, maybe had a first appointment, maybe had a conversation, but maybe it didn't proceed for whatever reason, I would shoot these out straight away because the, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to understand once they didn't proceed with you. Did they do anything? Did they actually end up going with another advisor, implementing the advice, in which case that's great. I mean, perfect. Personally, I'd rather somebody did something with somebody than, than nothing. Or alternatively, did they end up procrastinating? And often it's pointing out the procrastination piece, which can lapse and to go, yep, okay, 2022 is the year I'm going to do it. So, hey, hey, uh, hey, Tim, we met earlier this year. I want to drop your quick line before we take a break. Uh, in January, you and I sat down to discuss your plan to whatever the burning issue is, you know, get uh, take control of the, the finances, put in place some protection for your family. And I know it mattered enough for you to take the action of talking to. So I want to make sure at the end of it all, you're able to get done what you needed. If so, that's great. If not, is there anything I can do to help? Now, of all of them, I think 
you should send out, this is the one that is most likely uh, to either get you the opportunity to meet with prospects in, in, in the new year. So grab that one. If you've got sort of a, a number of people who you think maybe they didn't, they didn't proceed, but they probably did nothing off the back of it, grab this one. And the final email uh, outreach is to CIO partners. These could be uh, businesses that you've wanted to partner with in the local area. Maybe you've had discussions in the past. This could be actual partners, but you just didn't get time to do anything. Or you could just choose five people that you'd like to work with and put it out there. Uh, again, you've got nothing to lose by putting it out there. Uh, and I think a lot to gain. Again, I want to make sure I had a chance to connect with you for the years up. What a year it's been. I know we may not get a chance to do this for the break, but I hope it's been a good end to the year. I'd love to get the chance to sit down and chat more in 2021. We're thinking of launching a few marketing activities. I'd love to chat about whether we might be able to do something together. That's going to tell you straight off the bat whether or not they're on a marketing footing. Would you be open to the discussion? Uh, anyway, I just wanted to connect, let me know how it's gone. Uh, and if you do get a yes, uh, the um, there's a module which is uh, COIs and referrals, which will talk about how to how to structure that conversation. What are your thoughts on this? Just want to check in. Who could see themselves grabbing one or two or more of those templates and putting them into action in the next week? Yep, Josh, which ones? All of them, yes plus one, love it. Yep, definitely, says Nina. Yeah, it's this, I mean, it's just so, it's low-hanging fruit because everybody's in a good mood. You're not asking for anything now. You're asking for next year. You're, you're jumping in. If anything, you're helping people out if they've not done anything with it. So let me know if there's one in particular that you can put in place. Otherwise, I'm just going to rock on. So Nina's a yes, Josh is a yes, Elizabeth is a yes plus one. Love it. Okay. Josh, I absolutely think, for example, the CRI partners is 100% a video thing. Uh, the, the prospects one could be a video, but again, it could easily be an email. And the client one could absolutely, particularly with the, the, the um, you know, what are your plans for 2022? Okay. Let's just jump into the inbound one. So... For the last three or four years, I've been putting together a lead magnet, which talks a bit about, you know, um, what to do over Christmas. And I, I grabbed it today, this year, and I kind of updated it. And I'm going to walk you through it quickly. It's called The Best Christmas Ever, and it's specifically focused on six ways to unburden yourself from your money worries and yourself over Christmas Eve. You know what? I'm not going to run through it in detail, but I'll, I'll talk about how I would see you potentially using this if you wanted to. Let me just jump in here. So it is formatted, uh, it's ready to go. You can actually visit, if you were to visit shared.aldere.com.au forward slash best dash Christmas dash ever. We've set it up uh, as a, a on a page there. It can also, uh, I'll show, actually I'll walk you through this just quickly. So we've got the lead magnet, which we can customize, but we can also set you up with a very easy code um, I'll run you through the actual uh, template in a second. But what we can also do once we've customized it for your brand to some degree is we have the ability using a tool we have called Beacon B to give you a script, like a Peter code, which you can put into your website, which can operate either as a sort of a, a banner at the top of your site. We can drop it into one of your web pages or blogs. We can have it as a pop up. So there's a couple of different ways we can do it. The key thing, though, is uh, my suggestion on this is it's much better if we uh, launch this as your thing, rather as it's coming from you, not from me. So it basically talks about best Christmas ever. I would love to grab your logo if you're going to do this and pop it in there. The second page, I've given a bit of sort of a little bit about me and why I'm doing this. I personally would grab your uh, photo, pop it in there, maybe rewrite some of that text review that stuff there and ask the question whether that's representative of, of, of what you want to put out there. But the easiest thing to do is just put your name in there and, and put it out. And then essentially it just runs through some really simple things that people can do over Christmas. Uh, tech stocking is all about just setting some goals, sitting down and defining lifetime goals and ideal lifestyle while you've got some time off. Uh, it talk, Much like I'm talking to you next week, um, my suggestion, I, I believe it's really important over Christmas to block in you know, things like family holidays, uh, date nights, Stuff that you want to do with the family. Get it done now so it's locked in. For most people, the, key, the truth is that in order to improve your financial situation, you can save money. But by far, the, a better way of doing it is look for ways to increase your income and save money. And there's kind of suggestions around employment, uh, people who are getting close to retirement, and also if they're self-employed. There's a suggestion in there, which is a simple idea. Go in and analyze some of your spending. You know, can you get a better deal on your home loan, your car, your subscriptions? Can you get a phone contract? So just a couple of things there when people have time. 
Uh, I'm a big, <laughs> literally uh, did, did a bit of a clean out last week of the office, sold two pieces of video equipment I haven't used. It's 400 bucks. And I think um, there was a piece of research I saw recently. I said the average person has $11,000 worth of unused items sat there in their house, not, not being used. So it's kind of outlining, why not just grab some of that money, bank it and, and, and put some money in the bank or spend money. And then obviously, as you'd expect, uh, suggestion that if you've got a question of financial, now's a great time to reach out and ask people, ask an expert. And then finally, I've just kept it really simple. So again, we'd grab your uh, link, your logo. We could just um, update, you know, what are the three things you want? Ask a question. Let's pop your email address in there. Book a meeting. We can put a, a, a link to your calendar or we'll get a guide. We've got the, excuse me, we've got the 20% spending system, which I know some of you know about. It's another done for you lead magnet that we created, I think, about two or three months ago. Or if you already have a lead magnet, a downloadable on your site, uh, you would put the link in there and boom, next thing you know, they're visiting your website and uh, they are, yeah, they're, they're ideally joining your mailing list. So again, this is something that you could easily just put on your website. You could share it with one or two partners that you have. Uh, you could put it out to your mailing list all with the intention of sort of adding a bit of value to existing clients, possibly even being something you might share with other clients and something you can share with your sort of strategic partners so they could put it onto their clients. What do you think, guys? Who would be interested in grabbing this, putting their brand on it, uh, putting their own photos in there, sending it out as a campaign? Brill says, love it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So there you have it, end of your engagement. And if uh, you would like more information on this, if you want to see some of the templates I've created to support this, in particular, the latest incarnation of it, because what you're hearing are modules that some of them recorded a few years ago, some of them recorded like a couple of years ago, you can head over and join our free practice success uh, community and portal at success.ourdairy.com.au or head over to the website, actually. There's a there's a landing page there, which you can get all the information about what's in it. Just head over to ourdairy.com.au and then look for the free portal um, menu item and you can check it all out for yourself as always if you'd love the pet podcast i would love it if you would jump in and leave a five-star review and i'm, I'm please do leave your own name if you fancy it because then i can read it out and i can acknowledge you personally uh, that's it for me as always stay tuned for another episode of the finnovator coming soon and i hope you're enjoying the end of the year speak soon